Greetings, my friends, and welcome back to TNO, The Last Days of Europe, in which we're playing as a beautiful, slightly purple, Commonwealth of Siberia. But now we can address a couple of comments, but we'll get to that as soon as we read about Maslentitsa Week. It's Maslentitsa. The last week before the Great Lent of Orthodox Traditions, many still follow the tradition of abstaining from meat, and many do not either way. The holiday is a great excuse to eat plenty of delicious dairy products and to socialize. The Decembrists, as always, have organized celebrations to revive the festival because of its historical and religious significance, and in general, as a great occasion to celebrate. The week has seen much crepe eating, building of effigies of Lady Maslentitsa, outdoor activities and partying, with Rekachov putting himself putting him on an apron and running a street stand to hang out, hand out food. The week ends... Uh, we'll see the beginning of Lent, pre preparation for Easter, and is the occasion for religious introspection. Mm, I love food. Cool. And let's also do... Ooh, we have a billion dollars in, in debt. Ooh, I don't like that. Anyways, oh, look at that. Our de deficit to income ratio is 58.5%. Oh, boy! That's not good. Discord in the salons, subversive parties. To the victors, our debt will rise a little bit. Uh, our debt will rise. Ooh, slow progress. Our GDP will see a small boost. Duties and rights. Oh, man, last time, at the end of last episode, we had the revolt happen. I don't know why the revolt happened, it's just, we had to put him down. I I really did not like that. But anyways, subversive parties. Already new citizens of the Republic are assembling to form a new political party. Some are frankly mundane, liberal, or conservative. Others are more extremist, such as a radical Hungarian anarchist party, or a mere front for dangerous groups of former military separatists or shadowy businessmen. Their progress are limited in some way by Tom's constitution. All candidates have to be endorsed on the electoral list by of one of the four great salons. We can further monitor the situation by putting dangerous parties and associations under police surveillance. This will go against our deal's principles, but be an invaluable source of information. Once a list of moderate and extremist factions is drawn up, we can encourage moderates to join the salon system and try to eliminate extremist influence. Also, off screen, I decided, you know what, let's try something here. We're going to lower our stability just a little bit and recruit the best outsiders to decrease political outsiders. So... We'll get this hopefully will go up between 25 maybe up to 30 and we're about what is this 53 percent here so it is what it is the cynicism crisis okay so let's talk about this before i talk about like the worst countries in russia or at least the worst warlords to win in russia so i understand like authority is like the upper house for the humanist faction and as we're playing as a humanist faction it really doesn't matter too much seeing as we kind of don't care about the upper house since we don't we're humanists so it doesn't even matter what matters is the popularity, and of course, the people who vote for us, with popularity all over the place. All over, all four uh, little groups here, or cities. So, I know I need to increase salon popularity, and I shouldn't increase authority, but the only reason why I do that is because, let's see, decrease, we, I want to get more authority, so I can greatly increase humanist lower support. I know we already have enough lower support, I kind of want to keep doing that, but I know it's not smart to do that. We could increase authority, which doesn't really do much for us. But really, I suppose, the main thing we have to do is just do a pro-humanist campaign so we can increase popularity in a random district. And by random district, I guess I mean Kemerovo. So I guess, technically, with the support in the lower house, in the lower house, because we already have enough support in the lower house. So, okay, so really, I didn't understand this when I first started doing this. All we care about is more popularity, because that's all that really matters. Cool. Cool. And we have one, two, three. We're missing three there. We don't have three full lines, which kind of sucks. Yeah, this is not looking good. Oof. Not looking good. But that's okay. Let's have time go on. So let's talk about what we said yesterday. Is our goods expanding or something? What's going on over here? Prepare for war. After 69, controls all far eastern states. Build up there. We can do all this stuff, but we can't. Acquire new territories. Cool. Uh, so I asked you guys two episodes ago in the last episode, like, what were the worst unifiers for Russia? To form... Or reform the great nation of Russia. Uh, the number one person that was mentioned here was a uh, <clears throat> a simple guy, a simple, simple, totally, totally innocent guy named Sergei Taboretsky from uh, the good old nation of Komi. Komi seems to be a very wild nation. So he see you guys recommended or told me that that's probably the, one of the worst people that could lead any nation in Russia to reunify, reunify every, the nation, or re reunify Russia. So, but there's other, also other contenders, such as Irkutsk, which is led by Yagoda and the NKBD, Mr. Balding, uh, he'd probably get rid of you pretty quickly if he didn't like you, Hyperborea, so, some people also recommended Omsk, which, or said Omsk, because he's, Omsk is kind of crazy, it can go crazy, the Battle of Barcelona, cool, Abiras has come. 
just want to do this, man. I just want more popularity. Uh, also, the Aryan Brotherhood, which is kind of expected. The Aryan Brotherhood probably would not be very good for Russia overall. Just saying. So the subversive party is cool. I want to increase construction so we can build ourselves up even more and more and more. But, oh, we have no growth. We literally have no growth right now. Wow. Holy crap, that's not good. Uh, what are we building right now? Zero? Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't hurt us that much more. Cool. Subversive parties, authoritarian democracy, liberal democracy. Oh. Oh, maybe I did that one, but I didn't have to do that at all. A different path. Approaching the humanists. Reduces the administrative strain on our country. Let's see. Legacy of the Siberian Uprising. Oh my gosh, I hate that so much. Yeah, if we do this. Consumer goods, stability, supply consumption, recruitable population, and less political pack power factor gain. Well, let's go do this first, just because it's immediate and we can reduce the effects of the strain on our administration. We reject the falsities of Marxism and anarchism. We offer our own kind of workers a republic, one unlike the Soviet Unions from whence our republic was born, or the Siberian Black Armies, who, through the inevitability of human nature, was destined to fall back into despotism. Our republic is real, with legitimate democratic elections, rejection of the one-party state, and with freedom of speech and expression for all citizens. Sadly, ours is a unique path, and there aren't many who follow our ways. Hopefully, however, in time, we will be able to spread democracy to all of Russia. And subversive parties. Several commoners are beginning to show signs of radicalist thought belonging to undesired ideologies. Political po groups centered around radicalism are popping up within our borders, and if we don't fix this issue soon, it will brutally tear our democracy apart. We must find the individuals who snuck into our lands and contaminated our flowing well of intellectual thought with the poison of tyranny. We will be keeping a watchful eye on the commoners and even the political elites for any important developments. In the meantime, our agents will find and crack down on any radical political party that may attempt to corrupt the peasants' minds. We have to nip this problem in the butt. It, this seems kind of ironic that we don't let anyone think any sort of radical thoughts. I thought we were supposed to allow them the ability to think whatever they want, but I guess not. We lost more political power. God dang it. Mm, that's not good. I don't like that. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to just mostly just do pro-humanist campaigns from here on out. Oh, there goes civilian authority, which... Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, boy. This is not good. How do you deal with this debt? Or Because we don't, our economy is not growing at all. Like, holy cow, it's not growing at all. I have to slash this. I have to, because I can't afford it. Get that too high. Yes, debt is but a number, but still. Better industrial expertise, though. New training programs motivated by a need for better workers and managers has resulted in industrial workplaces that are more exact, efficient, and smart in the production of goods. New technologies and equipment are important, but they are never trump the human element, which is driven by practice and education. These new training programs, motivated by national vocation programs and investments in worker safety programs, have driven our workers t further towards true, perfect industrial efficiency. When they clock in, they'll become machines of the highest order. That is the goal. More cap and growth. Very nice. And we're not lacking anything here at all. And we have resistance to occupation. Hmm. Well, you guys are okay. If we're gonna do this, move that. Do we have military police? No, we don't. So remove that too. There you go. There you go. Local police force. Uh, no. Ooh, we can do local autonomy. You actually get more. What is that? Less damage garrisons. Daily complaints. I did not realize that this changed. Local police force. Ooh. What if you did local autonomy? That just that's actually nice. You actually get some more compliance. We currently have 8.9%. So that should go up even higher. How high is this gonna go? Oh, it's gonna go pretty high. Two points. Oh, it's going up by 0.2 a day. This is going up by 0.1. Ooh. That's not good. But just get as much local autonomy as you possibly can so we can crush anything over there. I thought we we're, we're surrounding the Divine Mandate of Siberia. We're mobilizing our soldiers to, you know, train, but still. Approaching the humanists. Even though darkness reigns within the world, there still remains some nations that have retained their care for humanity. The nations of the OFN, Sweden, and the Republic of India, all these nations are examples of democracies that have survived the last decades. Getting their support will be crucial for the survival and recognition of our regime as legitimate. And the, to this end, diplomatic envoys have always been sent to these nations. While we do not expect recognition as a legitimate government immediately, we can slowly sway them to our side, a trade deal here, intelligence there. With this strategy, it is hoped that we can achieve something of a mutual understanding between the humanist nations of the world. At this point, is there any way I can get more political power? Because I could really use more political power. I do not want to increase my debt. A great symphony or our growth will increase it, which is good, but... God... There's, oh, there's army XP, but, hmm. There's really not much we can do here. Potential enemies. Oh, so it has to exist? Huh. Diplomatic education. There's 25 political power, but that's it. Oh, my goodness. Uh, to the victors. We'll do that one. In our conquest of the various warlords and statists 
uh, or statelets of Central Siberia, we've come into a position of a great deal of industrial machinery. Much of it is still operational, and what isn't can likely be repaired. We must begin cataloging and distributing this machinery. A lion's share of it will be given to the workers' communes for the use in localizing production. The next largest portion will be go to the government for our needs in construction and manufacturing. The remaining pieces will be auctioned off at low prices to the capitalists and the nation, bringing the government a small profit and the capitalists more means with which to produce goods. So we get 0.36 a day. At this point, I might just not do a focus, because I have to get this done. we got to do a pro-humanist campaign so we get some more popularity. So, I'm not really sure what we're supposed to do, but this seems a bit... It's not crippling at all. It's just a bit worrisome, at least in my mind. It's a bit worrisome, we'll say. Drop tanks next. Cool. More range, please. Thank you. Yeah, go and do that. Nice. Get your planning going, because... Magadan, Irkutsk, Divine Mandate of Siberia, they're all killing each other. Which is probably a good thing. Probably a very, very good thing. This, though. This. No growth. How do we not have growth? This this has got to be a bug. I mean, you got to have at least some sort of growth. Right? The Cape of Good Hope resolution fails. Uncle Sam sa stays in his tent. 0% growth. Like, that's worse than a recession. Right? A recession, you mean, isn't, I, I don't know. Is a recession like when you have very, very tiny growth? You're still growing, but very, very tiny, maybe? Depression, I'm pretty sure, is negative growth. Negative growth. They're probably shrinking. So, I don't know. Don't quote me on that. I don't, I don't know everything in the world. So, that's just what I, I think it is, but... 0%? Um, we gotta have some serious problems if we're not growing at all. And we can't even make anything, so... Uh, how did the budget... Uh, there's... Overextended administration. It helped us a little bit. You know, it's better. By 5% for most things there. To the victors. Cool. The Great Clock. Our GDP will receive a small boost, but that's not enough. Public education. Our national debt will rise. Low minimum wage. Uh, let's see. Proportional GDP cost goes up. Two-year draft, four-year draft. I'm going to go with Discord and Salons next. The topic of how to integrate so many new citizens into the Salon system has sparked quite this debate in the Great Salons of Tomsk. Some argue that the common constitution should be amended. Others suggest political restrictions that would cast an ominous shadow of even over our democratic dream. It is important to calm tempers and soothe the chaos within the salons. We will need every salon to operate at its peak if we're to offer a united front to calm the political storm. By appealing to everyone's heart and mind, minds, we will be able to pull the vast talents of Tomsk together to figure out new solutions to the crisis. Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm still thinking about not doing this stuff up here. Is there any way I can get more political power? Because, ooh, did we finish this one? We got 23%. Mm. This is not good. This is just not straight up not good. I mean, our GDP isn't growing at all. We basically don't almost get any political power at all. We can't get any more popular support for our ruling party. Oh, prefer independence with poverty to servitude with plenty. Yeah, I, I, I'm not really sure what to do at all. It's just, this is not cool. This is definitely not cool. I'm tired of moving around my armies around here. So, uh, just not, uh, I, I'm not really sure what to think now. Oof. Germany as well. Uh, did they win the Civil War already? Oh, Borman did, yeah. The elephant in the room. We can do stuff here, but it means nothing. I just want pro-humanist campaign. The faster we can get it done, the faster we can come back and we can, you know, get to it. Woof. I want to spend more construction, but even if I spend more, it doesn't mean we can build more. And we could try it again. Okay, okay, now we can build more, which is good. We want to build, 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 build. I mean, this is, this is, what should I do about this? What do you guys think I should do? Because 2.4, it's still just going up, and they're going to pay debt, interests? I, I'm not really sure. I mean, I've already slashed civilian and military spending. I've, of course, increased the spending for construction, but, hmm, humanist call for compassion. Let's try that. The Humanist Society has launched a series of radio ads read by Shostakovich and Weinberg. The two friends be beg the Republic citizens to show love and compassion to their new citizens. Many that live in the new territories have endured years of dictatorship by radical elements. Now they are once more in Central Siberian Republic and are afraid for the future. Is it so surprising, then, that they may seek extremists and demagogues as patrons? We should not be grudged drowning men and women for seeking ways to stay afloat. Rather, we should dive into the tumultuous waters and show our fellow citizens that there are few reasons to be afraid. Discord in the salons with Central Siberia, once again under control. Many problems are starting to appear, mostly in our administration, while we are overextended. The main issue is with the salons. Any form of cohesion we once had has been shattered, and unity within the government is at an all-time low, as each salon has its own idea on how to govern the new territory. Bickering and arguments fill the Duma, and the coffee ships, as those loyal to their salon, disagree with whatever any other salon has to say. If we do not wish to form a democracy to collapse, or want it to, we must attempt to keep the salons in support of the government and end their 
endless quarrel. In the future, some of our actions may create cynicism, which could end the system of Solons if it reaches too high. We want to reduce the cynicism as much as possible if we do uh, not want the Solons to collapse. However, that could mean not getting to work on our own projects, so we should balance cynicism with our own ideas. Successfully maintaining cohesion within the Solons will keep our democracy alive, and our future actions will be very well determined the strength of our republic. The balance must be kept. Well, I can't do anything here if I don't get political power or, like, the means to combat, like, growing debt. So, 0.36, I mean... We're not getting anything here. We really are not getting anything. Of course, maybe I shouldn't lower civilian austerity because that does hurt our ability to get more political power. But with literally no growth, what am I left to do? We're going to spend a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, that's it. We're going to spend a lot of money. You know what? Future generations can pay off our debt. That's fine. Screw it. I'm not going to lower civilian spending anymore. Bad idea. I could actually spend even more so we get even more political power. That's not a bad idea then. Yeah, we might have to do that. We can manage with the debt later on. Their decision has finally been made by me. Whew. Calls for compassion, rights, and duties. Uh, public education. What is this? Freedom for independence? Increases idealism. Hmm. Alright, humanist campaign. Uh, 43.6. That's quite a bit, but no one really cares. Popularity. Decemberist. You come back. Which is kind of strange. 50, 25.2. Oh, come on, that's not cool. Uh, independence. The Basuri referendum, modernist Bastillard victory, humanist December's victory, Novosibirsk conference. Oh, there it is. Reduce administrative strain, replace political crisis with Novosibirsk conference. Okay, freedom for independence. We got a beeline for that one then. The humanist and December salons have united behind a joint proposal to rewrite the common constitution to make it easier for properly vetted political independence to run en under any salon of their choosing. The four great salons will still be allowed to have final say over their presidential candidates and policy platforms. However, Independence would be allowed to have full political career. This proposal has been heavily criticized by the Bastillards for allowing populist poison to keep seep within Tomsk's system, and by the modernists for weakening the party system. Nevertheless, the proposal is widely popular within the independent political crowd and is likely to strengthen confidence in our republic. More idealism, but increases political outsiders. So more idealism, which is not looking good right now, but then we get more political outsiders, which is not good. I hope... Is there anything I can do about this? I mean, this is ridiculous. I don't like this. Oh, no, 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 no! Hmm, yeah, let's just reform the political crisis first. If everything falls apart, then so be it. We can't even do this up. This is ridiculous. We can't even do regional development. This is stupid. Ah! So we gotta do that, though. And let's see, we want to get rid of political outsiders a little bit more. Greatly increases idealism. Oh, uh, actually, that's not bad. We can do that one. It lowers our stability, which kind of sucks. We did this one. Oh! Recruit the best outsiders. Interest rates on our debt will increase. Well... Dead is but a number, right? Uh, I bet some more cast. That'd be kind of cool. And that's exactly how long will it take to get down to this one? 25 days, that's not bad. Dealing with extremists. And we get more stability, which would be nice, but then we're going to lose that stability as we try to get less cynicism and try to get less outsiders. Hopefully. Collapse of the underground state unity. Oh. That the latter has entered into agreement to become a Reich's protectorat? Hold on. Poland. Reichsprotektorat. Pol I've never seen this before. Poland. Whoa. They actually became a Reichsprotektorat instead of general government. Wow. That is a bit unusual. At least, I don't ever think I ever see that. Let's go and grab this one next. More output. Max factories in the state is always good. That is a bit wild, I would have to say. Hungary starts with Germany. Another piece that moves in the great game. Very cool. Yeah, that's a bit nuts in my mind. And there's still this... Oh, hello. South Africa is not looking good right now. Would not want to live there. But the Boer Republic is not looking good either, so... Military austerity? Uh, we can we can keep slashing military austerity. That's fine with me. Goodbye. Civilian spending, we go to over five billion dollars. And let's go... Oh, we have to do advisory referendum. referendum. Oh, boy. The common, refs, common constitution allows for advisory referendums on thorny societal debates. A supermajority of the deputies on, on the four salons now request an advisory referendum on the political issue. The referendum is to ask the citizens whether the modernist Bastillard program of the long-term integration or the December's humanist plan of independent political right is to be made it the law of the land. The campaign is spread throughout old and new territories. As mandated by the common constitution, the sitting president is no way forced to withdraw... Uh, follow the referendum's results. Rejecting the popular will, however, is likely to have grave consequences on our legitimacy. Uh, let's see. Right now, let's see. Who, who was it? It was between 
The Humanists and Decemberists. Humanists. Humanists and Decemberists. So we have the most popularity. Combined, we should do okay. Because we, together, we have a lot of support. They have only like 46, 47%. Together, we have over 50. So this should be okay to do. For the love of God, I hope we do well. Hmm. All right, so right now, let's see. Debt is but a number, right? And now we're getting about... Okay, come on, game. Stop lagging. Stop auto-saving so much. 0.49. Screw it. We're, we're raising the budget. 6.77 billion dollars a mole in debt every year. Not including the interest that we have to pay on this thing. Oh, my goodness. Woo! That is... Ah, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. Uh, this is okay. Main battle tanks, IFBs. Let's grab some better main battle tanks. That'd be nice. Really, construction spending. So, we should be able to really start building some stuff up. Really, really, really. Also, there was a comment from yesterday saying that I should have done even more or whipped or... Okay, maybe not whip, but uh, should have done more for the Siberian plan before we, you know, became the Commonwealth of Siberia. So, it is what it is. You know, I tried our best. You know, it's only minus 27% consumer goods. 0.47 construction speed. 0.27 production efficiency cap. 0.14 factory output. 0.05 resource efficiency gain, but we get no extra growth, which is fine. It is what it is. Come on. Come on. We want the humanist December's victory. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, no. Modernist Bastillard victory. One of the shiny, bragworthy features of democracy is its ability to make decisions based directly on the will of the people. And today we will do just that, sort of. The results of our non-binding referendum on the political status of independence are in. The modernist Bastillard plan denying independent po politicians easy ballot and government access in favor of more gradual pro political integration is one. The people of Tomsk seem to largely accept and appreciate our unique salon system the way it is, and agree with modernist and Bastillard that allowing independence to operate freely within the system would destabilize and slow work governance. While there are many people who support independence working outside of the current system, these people were not as numerous as many have anticipated. Of course, the referendum is non-binding. The president is not legally obligated to act upon its results, and if they feel that making life easier for independence is a moral and practical thing to do, and there's nothing stopping them except the knowledge that doing so would create a lot of cynics. Uh, hold on. Wow, we have absolute control over Tomsk. That's nice. Yeah. I don't know, man. I mean, we voted. I guess we had no authority. I guess it makes some sense. But that doesn't. That shouldn't matter. The popularity. Mm, hold on. Integration Bureau? People have spoken, so be it, whatever. Novo Sibirsk Conference. we got to get through this. A great conference is to be held in Novo Sibirsk under the recommendation of the December's Humanist Program. There, independence of all sorts shall be brought within the same salon system. Already, a great number of political parties have come forward with candidates' lists, applying for membership to a salon of their choosing. Giving out this much power to independence is likely to affect the political situation in the Republic for the coming years. To the planned supporters, this is irrelevant. None should see their political freedom put on hold no matter the circumstances. The nation trusts its people, and this trust shall be rewarded. Oh, political crisis. God, I hate political crisis. We're trying the best we can. Oh, uh, look at see the Siberian Uprising, which is so stupid. It should not have happened. It really should not have happened. So basically, we get plus 0.5 a day once this is over, and we get plus 5% stability, increases cynicism and political outsiders. Uh, so, so be it. So be it. And then we've got to focus more on industry. The army can kind of wait, because the army's pretty good already, so. Not bad. Not bad. Oh, now that is a tiny radar station. Irkutsk. Yagoda is dying. Oh boy. Oh boy. Then again, we have Magadan, who is a fascist, <laughs> with Matkovsky. And then we have Mr. Men up there in the north. Okay, get 0.57 a day. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, let's see. Other comments. Someone recommends I play as Monarchist Comey. I'll be honest. Comey is so special, I guess, in TNO that I've got to do multiple cam campaign runs with Comey. Obviously, I'm going to get, go to the Burgundy system there eventually under Taboritsky. I'm going to go maybe Monarchist eventually, maybe even Demo Democratic, because people have recommended that I play as a Democratic version of Comey, so we'll see about that. And also, also someone recommended I play as a Siberian Black Army as well. And of course, the Commies reunify Kazakhstan. Whatever. But yeah, Comey seems very interesting. That's why I'm spending a lot of time on Russia on my channel, uh, just period, just because... There's so many unique warlords here, and while we don't have TNO2 yet at the time of this recording, that's not bad. Currently, we've resolved the political crisis with the Novo Sibir's conference. <sighs> that's, that looks a little better. We still can't invest anything here, though, because why would we be able to? 
Uh, dealing with extremists, new friends in the salons slightly increases modernist lower house support. Resolving, you know what? Just go and go all the way. Dealing with extremists, the government has now gone ahead with a program to tackle the political crisis. The wind has been taken out of much of our opposition, however. Some determined critics of our republic remain. Hardliner militarists in Novosibirsk and Krasnoyarsk, in intractable critics of the latest CSR, anarchists, remnants in the Far East, all united in the hatred of our government. Discord has once again broken out in the four salons over the topic of censure. Many argue that the Republic has no place for extremism, and that the voices of these elements of the state should be silenced. Others point out that with their new approach to the political crisis, the opposition's power base dwindles by the day. Better to let the radicals rage to an ever-shrinking crowd. The president is likely to be asked to make a final decision. Not bad. It's just... There's so much negative going on, at least in my mind, that I'm like, I'm... Like, I hope we can resolve this. I hope we can. Because <laughs> I, I, I've got to go here. I want to make sure that we do at least okay. Hopefully, when we get support, though, it doesn't happen in Tomsk. Because we're doing pretty darn well. In any place, I probably want to do in Novosibirsk or maybe even Kemerovo, just because we have quite a bit of support. But I wouldn't mind Krasnoyarsk. Yeah, that's not bad. So, actually, you have most. We're, we're third place for po people's popular support, which is okay. Ooh, we got more here, huh? At least, finally, though, something has been positive or become positive in the last 26 minutes of this video we finally have mostly resolved the political crisis it's not over yet it's not over but we're doing better oh my goodness things are looking up even though that debt is <laughs> it's getting scary 6.9 nice one but still oh my goodness now oh, we're getting there we're getting there come on so we currently are at for pop salon popularity 25.2 25.2 25 well i'm not sure if i should do that much but we have to wait for it to be removed. Krasnoyarsk gets increased in support. So, Krasnoyarsk, hopefully, this gets turned more purple. So, dealing with extremists. New friends in the salons. The four great salons have opened new branches all across the nation, and scores of curious citizens have begun attending them. Not all of our new res residents find the salon system per pertinent, but enough to do that. The great four societies have seen their membership swell. Dozens of new thoughts, artistic techniques, and political programs have begun swirling around each salon. Despite the grumbling of the old guard, the growth of the salon system is in the long run the likeliest candidate to fully re reabsorb or resorb the political crisis, and for that reason it could be a good idea for the central government to aid its spread throughout the nation. Arts, science, and politics should be democratized. A new set of citizens' assemblies are given birth or are about to give birth throughout central Siberia. Dealing with extremists, with a continent of extremism gripping tightly our nation. We must decide how it should be handled. The ideologies of fascism, communism, and all their cousins threat to strike at the heart of our very democracy and eliminate the experiment we started. Nevertheless, our mission is to allow people from all backgrounds to have a say in our government. Will we decide to ban the radical political parties to ensure a democratic system? The idea of placing asterisks around freedom of speech contradicts our original message, but it will protect our government from falling under the press of boot. Alternatively, we could continue permeating the radical rhetoric at the cost of the possibility that one independent party may gain too much support. In the end, however, we would maintain our belief that everyone in a country should have a say in the government. Uh, oh, what do we? What do we prefer? Prefer stand for freedom of speech and the right to vote. Right now, we have so little political integration. It's not even funny. Let's see. So we can increase cynicism versus idealism. Uh, what is that? Zero change in the past month. Cool. And then increase political outsiders. You know, it's already so low. Uh. Hmm. Both issues could cause a failure of a revolution. We can probably hit cynicism this a little bit more. These independent parties are too dangerous. I don't want to do this one. I actually prefer to do this one, but... Just because this is almost 0% for uh, integration. Uh, we gotta keep an eye on that. We gotta keep an eye. We're gonna lower our stability so much. Samara... Oh, what if I... Unifies the rest of the anarchy is winding down. Wow, look at that. Also, someone recommends I play Samara as well. I forgot about that. I want to do all this stuff, but we just can't. We just can't, because we've got... Cynicism, political outsiders to deal with, which is a bunch of garbage, but whatever. Tagaki, Takagi, elected prime minister of Japan, cool. Cool, so yeah, if we can do that. Lower house support. Um, okay, we already have enough support, like we did the other stuff before, so. Lower house support is more than fine. 25.2. Need more purple man. Consolidate humanist rule. Greatly increases humanist authority. Actually, how much authority do we have? 2.8%? That's not much, but whatever. It is what it is. In 11 days, hopefully we'll get more support somewhere here. Alright, so we can do stuff down here. Idealism, lose stability, increases political outsiders. Oh my goodness. 
Can can this stuff just not hurt us like this much? I mean, my goodness, what are we supposed to do? Uh, the Outsiders Act. We get for 700 days more research speed, increases idealism, and decreases political outsiders. The Outsiders Act. That's not bad. Okay, maybe we might be able to do that. Because everything else here looks really bad. Decreases humanist popularity. We can't afford to do that. Nope. Nope. This seems like the only thing we can really do. The Outsiders Act. Yeah. 63 out of 105. It's not bad. How do we have 63 out of 105? Because we have 27. I, I'll be honest. I don't understand this too much at the time of this. Because maybe I'm mentally just going crazy. So increase idealism. And increase... Of outsiders. Let's do that. Cool. Oh, no, this, is, this is going to change. Better industrial equipment. The economy is doing great, and new reforms in industrial subsidizing have resulted in the shipping of updated industrial equipment across the country. Products are being qu produced quicker and cheaper. The further progress of mechanization into the once ossified industrial world will prove a boon to worker and manager alike. No more long, horrible hours. No more subpar products screwed up or screwed in by imperfect human hands. Industry continues her march forward. These were a long time coming, however. Increases in budgets and a renewed focus on what our industries are making have increased the support and the much needed renovation of our country's industrial equipment. Excellent! Resource efficiency gain, we get some more construction speed, some more output, and quite a bit more dockyard output, even though we don't really use dockyards yet. Cool. Excellente! Yeah, political integration. Not oh, is, it, is that 9%? Not bad. And political situation, well. We passed zero months with idealism greater than 6%. I'd love to do this too, because this would be so good to do. Oh, popular radical ideologies would decrease. Uh, we're going to do that one next, get more political power, new friends in salons, and then resolving the political crisis. Through cooperation and dis dis uh, disputes, the four great salons have managed to weather this first political challenge to a pass an act's new republic. The issues of independence politicians and cynicism in our nation, nation air, far and our nation are far from resolved. Oh man, that could really screw you up there. Left to fester, these twin threats could end up fatally undermining our idealistic republic. This is no reason to despair, for our great democratic experiment also gives us the tools needed to weather the storm. We must stand vigilant, remain true to ourselves, and open to compromise. Pasternak's legacy must endure, and as its guardians, the four great salons must cons constantly strive to rise above petty politics to ensure that the flame of idealism burns in central Siberia. So yeah, this one we're going to do immediately so we can decrease radical ideologies, uh, slightly increases GDP, as all comes back to having more and more political power. There's nothing here that helps us with growth, though. Just GDP. Yeah, GDP. 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 Oh, oh, there's growth. Install poverty relief programs. Slightly increases GDP. Ooh. No GDP there. No GDP. Weekly manpower slightly increases GDP. Uh, get more stability this way, which is not bad, but... We're going to go and do this so we get... First of all... More political power for two months, gets more stability, and decrease the radical ideologies uh, things there. Uh, so that is good. That is good. Ooh, I'm going crazy. I'm sorry I'm going crazy with this episode. I really can't feel like I am. That's okay. Uh, early industrial robotics? Very nice. And then, even though we still have 0% militarist, nope. Not even going to bother with that. Slash it. Uh, with this, this is cool and all. Radicalism, hmm, 45%. This is probably 9% still. What we're going to do next, civilian budget boost, Ooh, uh, we're gonna need, we, need, we need as much political power as possible. GDP is about a number, or the debt is about a number. So, we're going to state poverty relief programs, because that that gives us at least a little bit of GDP growth. So, what am I to do here? <laughs> we have zero percent, we have an economy literally not even growing. Uh, house elections, okay, nothing changed. Very good, good, good. You know what, we didn't gain anything, we didn't lose anything, so. Could have been much worse. Consolidate humanist rule. Well, I mean, 2.8, whatever. 22.5, still not good enough. Resolving the political crisis. Removes the current administrative strain on our state. Cool. Let's come back over here. Rights and duties. Let's do that one. Every relationship in life is a game of give and take. The same applies to the relationship between a government and its citizens. A government is obliged to maintain the roads, work to keep the crime rate low with police, and protect the citizens from outside threats like an invading nation with the military. In return, the people are compelled to pay taxes, to go to school, participate in the military, and most importantly, vote. So long as both parties continue to do their part and uphold the relationship, the nation will thrive. Supposedly, temporary lull to the political crisis. Extremism, no longer a severe threat. Instability, ever-present, but not at all crippling anymore. It would be a stretch to call Central Siberia a beacon of stability, but it's safe to say that the young republic is now out of the hot water. 
Many of these former extremists, as well as a number of assorted independents, have begun accepting and joining our salons. Every day, the number of heated, angry arguments between factions threatening to break out into violence decreases, with the number of impassioned but calm and logical discussions between former rivals increasing. It is truly a wonder to see, for example, a former Silovok from Novosibirsk actually engaging in friendly debate with his colleague regarding the place of military intelligence in the Republican security apparatus. Had we failed to get men like him on board with our political system, maybe he would have been threatening the state with military power instead of sitting down for tea in a chat with in the Salon. Much progress has still yet to be made, but slowly the people all across our realm are integrating into our republic. Finally, a moment to breathe. Oh, my goodness. Now we just got to focus on the GDP. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Total seats, 27, 27, 27. That's not enough. <laughs> Lower house faction support. I didn't actually realize that you could hover over this and it tells you more information. 56, 51%, and 36. So I didn't realize we had 100% already, so... Wow, that sucks. It's just getting walloped. All right, next up. Come all the way to the bottom. Yeah. Add 200 million to the national debt. Whatever. We got billions in the debt already. So, so poverty rate gets better, which is awesome. So what is slight GDP growth? What does that mean? It'll encourage political thought. That's good. Uh, we currently get how much political power every day? Oh, West unifies West Siberia. Oh boy, Two, over two a day. Good lord, that's nice. Ural Ural military district. Wow, I didn't think that they could actually win, but okay, sure, why not? Orokovsky, one step closer. Basic jet cast. Cool. Mm. Get some better fighters next. That'd be good. Happy 1966, my friends. It's a new year. Maybe a new us. Perhaps. We'll see what happens. Hmm. Hmm. Now, if we do this stuff down here, this doesn't help us with radicalism or anything like that. I want to get these benefits because we need these benefits. Slide decreases, increases GDP. Yeah, this doesn't help us with this stuff up here, so which we gotta do. So, uh, expand the university system, interest rates on our debt will increase, the research facilities will go up, bribe the opposition, decreases political outsiders, greatly increases cynicism, increases idealism, but increases political outsiders. We don't want that. I'm not gonna do that because it hurts our popularity, so no. Increase the best outsiders. It decreases political outsiders. Greatly increases, it decreases our salon authority this is a good one to do because we have no authority anyways so 49 percent. let's do that one we lose a little bit of stability but whatever uh next up so we did that one the great clock okay sure why not the citizens of a great republic can be considered as cogs in a, to a great machine or a great clock each one of these each one of them minute or minute in nature serving a purpose as inscrutable to them as the purpose of timekeeping might seem to the tiniest gear nestled deep inside the machinery of the clock However, every one of these gears and cogs working to keep the clock ticking are as vital to the clock's function as the arms on the face of the clock. Each one serves as invaluable purpose, or has an invaluable purpose, just as every one of our citizens does for a grand democracy. Everyone has a place in society, and every person serves to make our nation greater. At least we hope so. Hmm. We hope so. Oh, it's only 7.6 billion a year, that's all. Is this bugged? No, it's not. It's not bugged yet, no. Because we gotta wait for the poverty thing to finish first, right? When removed, we get a slight growth. Uh, unassigned divisions. Who are you? Pretty cool. We're only making one at a time. We're trying to convert these guys to APCs more and more. How many do we have? We have IFVs. 404. We might as well try to convert them a little bit more. Get just slightly more armor. It's not a lot more. And mobile. Let's get some APCs. Very nice. Very nice. Go on a train. So now we don't need nearly as much motorized on those guys, which would be good. We only have one still, though, but whatever. Uh, anything else? AP APCs is good. Oh, over here. Invest in construction moderately increases GDP. I mean, that's okay. Build up the air bases. Reunification of Russia. We can't quite do that because no, we can't. <sighs> Cynicism is now at 53%, while this is at 9%. Hmm. Increases political outsiders. You can't do anything else here, which is fine. How are we doing over here? 25.5. Zero per zero percent. Oh. Eh, nothing really changed here too much, which is kinda of disappointing. Hmm. That's in construction. 
slightly increases GDP, get more stability, which we could probably use. More weekly manpower. Weekly stability, plus two, plus two percent more. Ooh. You know what? We're gonna select that one first. I want as much stability as possible because we're gonna lower it, lower it, lower it a little bit more. Thank God that legacy is over. That was flipping stupid why they revolted when I was trying to help them out as much as possible. But re anyways, regional synergy. One of the great difficulties of Russian geography is how isolated our various peoples can be. Whether they be separated by mountain, forest, or just the great distances of the steep, it's often a laborious task to bring such an item from point A to point B. Such separation and isolation of our population makes ruling over any great portion of Russia difficult, hinders our industrial development, and encourages separatism. In order to combat the various issues that arise from our isolation, we should begin patching the railway systems of our dis disparate lands into one large cohesive railway system. System. Just as a stream system might repair a sweater, we will sew our lands together with rail. Slow progress. Machenslaw. Machenslaw. Observe the flow of papers and survey results that come across his desk frustrated. He resists. He rested his fist upon his chin, contemplating. The results of the statistical questions were not good. Outside of Tomsk, people were overwhelmingly against the extension of rights for the sexual minorities. The black ink that dappled the peep towers were of the approval columns were like suit upon his fiery heart. Perhaps they have run aground. He breathed the sun. During the Soviet days, he, it would perhaps be effortless. Enforcing rules from on high was no troubling matter for the apparatus or apparatchiks of the Communist Party. On paper, anyway, in the constitution of the former Union were protections granted to minorities that went unfulfilled for many years. As a Pole and a Jew, he knew that the malignance, malignance of ignorance and malice that stemmed from it. Without a popular mandate, there would be no point to his bill. He would have to shelf it for now. Oh, God, why? Look at the effects. Instead, he picked up his fountain pen and began writing. His handwriting wasn't something that he would call beautiful, but it would have to do an, an education bill would perhaps be in order. Flowing from his pen were rivers of ink, cursive like the notation of musical pieces and compositions. He would have to shove this one too, but perhaps one day this would be just like a stepping stone after another. Michelsla envied the modernists, but the humanists should try nonetheless. Slow progress, but not progress nonetheless. Are you kidding me? Why are you hurting me like this? We're not doing that great, but the People's Music Festival. Okay, now we're doing great. Who doesn't love music? The humanists have answered this question with a resounding no one, and it was given every, even the common working man a chance to pursue their artistic passions on the side. They have thrown together a lovely music festival featuring the works of humanist composers being played by workers. Despite mockings from the other salons, the humanists have provided free music lessons to workers who want them, and the performers have surprisingly done quite well so far, though not as well as professionals. The workers' musical prowess is most certainly evidence of the humanists' long-held belief and vision that education and the pursuit of one's passions is a right to all. But the politics that cause the event don't matter much right now, because everyone is able to have a good time, listen to some good music, and share some good vodka. Humanity is capable of whatever it put its minds to. We lost a whole 1%, which is not much. <sighs> we lost it in Tomsk, I think, maybe. But, come on, man. Seriously? Seriously? Big sad. Oh, look at this. 65%. Nice. We passed one month with idealism greater than 60%. Nice. <sighs> Decreased political outsiders. It's only debt, right? It's only debt. Hey, we got 0.7 though. At least the economy is finally growing. I can say that with a smile on my face. While our annual deficit's only 7.8 billion. That's all. Protect the elites, increases idealism, increases political outsiders, and uh. Hmm. Bribe the opposition, decreases political outsiders, but greatly increases cynicism, which is not ideal. Yeah, no. Improved main battle tanks. Greatly decreases humanist popularity in a random district. No, 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 no. It does increase uh, voting turnout. Mm hmm. Mm, sure, why not? Even though I'm not even really using them yet, so. Yeah, got the tanks, cool. Cool. And we got some more. Good. Anything over here? Slightly increases GDP. More, better poverty rate. We want. We really want to focus on the poverty rate, so we'll do that one next. Improved healthcare, national de debt will rise sharply. Do get more political power, which is not bad. Monthly poverty rate does go up. Uh, we're just going to lose money like crazy, so who cares about money? Uh, let's see if we do improved healthcare. If there's one issue on which most all citizens are united, it's that our healthcare system could be improved. While the mechanism that provides insurance and funding up for healthcare is functional, the hospitals themselves are grossly out of date. And, and need of renovations. Machinery that's decades old, medicine that's long since expired, and far worse has been discovered in hospitals across the nation. While this may have sufficed in previous decades, we now live in a rapidly modernizing Russia where such inadequacy will no longer do. Hospitals will be allocated greater funding, and a new oversight committee will handle the further modernization of our nation's healthcare facilities. 
At least we have a little bit of growth. We can invest in construction, but we're going to expand the state welfare programs. Just immediately do that. That's good. We can slowly, slowly improve. Because, let's see, let's look at poverty. Because that's going to determine how much money we can actually get from GDP. I think. I could be completely wrong, but I don't think I am. Maybe I am. Maybe I am. Poverty, not bad. Oh, and there goes Irkutsk. Good luck, guys. Now kill each other off. Oh, boy. We got the big, almost four left. We got five. But we'll see what happens. Oh, Magadan's all the way over there. I didn't realize they had that too. Okay. 165. Oh, we're almost ready for basic mechanization to increase to mass mechanization, which means we get 20% more monthly population. We get a little bit better training times, less consumer goods. We get more output and recruitable population factor. Not bad, I would say. Not bad at all. I'll take whatever I can get. At least at this point in the campaign. It's only $8 billion in debt, that's all. Build up the bases, uh, we're pretty good right now. Expand the university system, interest rates, decreases political outsiders. We're currently at 13%, so... Why not? Why not? Uh, actually, no, we can do that one next. Cool. Improved healthcare, awesome. Family subsidies. Despite conjecture to the contrary, we are of the opinion that to aid the poor and ailing in Russia does more good than it does harm. By implementing a system of sustained fiscal stimulus into the poorest regions of our nation, we can raise the overall productivity and quality of life in these regions, eventually bringing them up to speed with the rest of the nation, or of Russia. By providing the poor family money with which to pay for their food and buy coal for their furnaces, we free up capital that they can spend on their other products and appliances. By increasing consumption, we boost industry, increase standard of living, and this upward spiral snowballs until the fiscal aid isn't even needed anymore. Debt rises. What's debt? What is debt but a number? 9.2 billion a year? Just keep spending. Uh, oh, except for the military. We don't give the military anything. We're already at 0%, so... More idealism, why not? Max out the idealism. Aimless would be really nice to do, too. Civilian budget boost now. Without that, we get 1.66, which is... Okay, but I just realized that we have pro-humanist campaign here again, so unfortunately, it doesn't matter. And we're back up to 1.76. Not that much of a bigger change, but that's okay. That's okay. Come on, poverty rate. A better agricultural methods. Hey, without food, men may, may not work. And without work, government simply ceases to function or exist. The bureaucracy that's just seen it evaporating in a matter of weeks. However, the inverse is also true. With more food comes more plenty and the formation of ever more complex states. After all, were the, not the first states formed with the creation of agriculture? New agricultural innovations will reduce the amount of hard labor needed on the fields and shift the workload to mechanized equipment like tractors and automated harvesters. Advances in fertilizer allows crops to grow quicker and cheaper. Man will have food and it will be plenty. For this bread, we thank thee. Look at that. Looks awesome. Awesome, 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 awesome. And of course, it doesn't do anything there, but we can build more. And build more, we will. You know what? Hmm. I think we'll keep one at all times on civilian factories. There you go. Keep one at all times. That's fine for now. And then keep making one, at least one, on infrastructure at all times. I think that'd be kind of nice. There we go. Here we go. We could do... You know what? I'm not going to even do this. I think we should do... Wait, do we do it already? Hold Cross salon thinking, university system, outsider act. We already did it. We already clicked on that one. I yeah, probably did actually. Building a brigade. Oh, I still gotta play as that nation too sometime. That sounds like a lot of fun. Military construction too. We're gonna need that extra boost to that stuff later on. But we're gonna save up for a pro humanist campaign next. Family subsidies. Great. Guns of the citizenry. Actually, we're not gonna do that because it's gonna greatly increase our debt because of those military factors. But Bureau of Military Industrial Development. Everything in warfare is industrialized now, whether it be the truck one rides and to get to the battlefield, the scout plane one uses to scope out the battlefield, or the tank one drives to fight on the battlefield. All of it originates in factories far behind the front lines. One simply cannot do without these modern machines of war, and attempting to do so would be foolish. A new bureau is to be created which will manage the production and distribution of all the trucks, tanks, and aeroplanes coming out of these factories behind the front lines. Even if we can't beat the enemy with quality of our weapons, we will at least be able to outproduce them. Great! We can produce things even faster, which doesn't hurt our growth too much. I'm actually doing okay. Oh, look at that. West Siberian Republic. Where do you live by? Russo Finnish ceasefire fine. Signed. The perfidious Finns escape justice once again. Oh, boy. Oh, Yeltsin. Oh, that's another... Yeah, we, I need to play as this group again sometime. Not again, but actually play as them. The Zlaus Arms Plant. Oh, conservative democracy. Huh. Design Bureau. Oh, my goodness. Overextended administration. I'm sure these guys have it, too. Our founding member, Slip Leash. Vlasov. 
Okay, German military training. Okay, Bolnyachenko, hello. The despotism of winter warriors, private enterprises. What is going on here? Zykov, who are you? Wait, what? why did you just change leaders twice? Uh, okay. And that happens in Tomsk. Really, in Tomsk? Really? I mean, that's okay. I mean, we could probably take over, take the Decembers there, but of all places, like, you can get support anywhere else. <laughs> Alright, so cool. Multi-layer ceramic steel stuff. Let's maybe focus a little bit more on guns. 64, anyone? Uh, infantry weapon improvement 7. And I know, like, this entire campaign, like earlier I said, these videos are going to be long. They're just going to be straight up long, just because we need to keep them long uh, to get through as much as we possibly can. And free to see me mess up a little bit more and more. <laughs> So we'll see what happens. Let's see, we want some. Oh, we have another thing on these guys. Uh, do that first. Uh, Bureau of Military Industrial Development. Guns are the citizenry. Our citizens are no strangers to the military. A good portion of them are serving right now, serving on the front lines or guiding the border, protecting us from whatever enemy might try to extinguish our light. A good deal more would certainly be willing to enlist and serve, if not for one great problem our military has. It needs more arms, guns, artillery, support equipment, you name it, we need it. Our citizenry may be ready and eager to serve, but in military you just can't have them without any equipment. While we may be a peaceful people, our neighbors are surely not. If the need ever arises for a mass conscription and arming of the populace, we must be ready, which is why a large m investment is needed in our military industry immediately. You get four military factories, which will go straight probably to our jet fighters. Uh, but other than that, we're doing really well. Wow, look at our artillery. Wowzers. I'm going to actually put you at the bottom. So I'm going to max you out. There you go. Oh. There goes... Oh, the Dobanga Brigade is gone. And Deutsche Nation clearly won the Central European Council. European Council? National Socialists. What is. Who is this? For Auslan? Like Vipers? The Black Cats. I have a black cat. Interest rates. Decrease political outsiders. It's only interest rates, right? Promote the elites. Jet fighters. Cool. This is going to hurt me probably quite a bit in the long run. Advanced drop tanks. Very awesome. But there's literally nothing I can do about this. That's okay, though. Alright, six days in Tomsk. Cool. Ah, sadness. Sadness for this. Man, Germany is just going to town with these guys. Oh, we might have a little bit more popularity here. Yeah, I, I'm not going to lower my popularity. This is idealism. Yeah, no, bribe the opposition. Nah, that's okay. Let's come back down here. Let's do one of these. Why not? If we can. Encourage returning expatriates. We get a little bit more stability, which is okay. It slightly increases GDP. And best of construction gives us a little bit more GDP as well, but we're going to wait till we get 50 up here, maybe. Developmental subsidies. You get... Ooh, EuroLeague, NKVD. Oh, that was another one that someone wanted me to play it with. Magnetorsk. Magnetorsk. Magnetogorsk. I'm sorry, I cannot speak right now. I apologize. Guns are the citizens, and we do a great symphony. Our growth will actually increase. Our expert handling of the economy has resulted in a boom. Several sectors of the economy, including manufacturing, construction, utilities, and finance, have reached double digits in growth. With this explosive economic rise, we will have seen a great deal of financial resources flooding our coffers. With these newfound resources, we can continue to invest back into our own economy, increasing quality of life, lowering unemployment, reducing crime, increasing stability, and boosting economic expansion in our country even further. A great symphony of steel and steam is coming together, and the changes this melody will bring Russia are unfathomable. Well, we'll see what happens. Peace, conference is over. And NKVD are gone. Bye-bye. <laughs> Scientific research. Uh, a bonus for industry would be pretty good, too. And, of course, this... Uh, let's see. Probably, uh, expand the university system. Research facilities. Increase political outsiders. I'm sorry, I, I gotta do that one first. Humans control. Oh, actually... Hmm. How are we looking now? 27.4... Well, that sucks. All is 27.4. Is that it? Is that all we got? Sukarno wins Indonesian Civil War. Not looking good, guys. Not looking good. It's almost 60. It is 66. We're halfway through 66. And we'll get through one more focus before we end this episode. Uh, actually, yeah. Cross the line thinking. That's good. Decrease my authority for more idealism. We're really, really idealistic here. Holy cow. 89%. Five months with idealism greater than 60%. Not bad. What happens if we get to 100%? At that point, I might just go ahead and lower our idealism for more or less political outsiders, so... We'll see what happens. We'll definitely see what happens. Ooh, another division. Cool! Go and train them if you need to. Suharto Ku's Indonesian government. Strange times in a strange, strange land. 
You know what? Uh, I could change that right now, but we're not going to. Hmm. Yeah, not bad. How's the uh, debt looking? 11 billion? Is that all? Is that all? Just 11 billion? 9.6 billion every year? A great symphony. And we shall conclude with a chair of economical research. As our national economy grows and diversifies, it will become increasingly unwieldy and susceptible to external market forces. The government has an obligation to the people to mitigate the influence and severity of these market fluctuations on the economy. Our method of combining this will be through greater integration and development of our domestic economy. A new government department will be formed with the intent of further integrating our workers' co co-ops, private businesses, and government industry. By encouraging further independence and communication between these sectors of the economy, we will be able to solidify our national economy. We'll get more industrial equipment and uh, expertise. Both those societal development will improve. The People's Siberian Plan succeeds. Replace this organized economy with humanist economy, which looks not bad, and we actually get 5% more growth. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed this episode somehow. With my ranting, just a little bit of my kind of uh, displeasure with a few things. Regardless, I hope you found it somewhat enjoyable. If you did, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow, as we will become very idealistic, and hopefully not have a problem when trying to maintain our results in the potential election. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.